the Constituent Assembly of India was elected to write the Constitution of India. Following India's independence from Great Britain, its members served as the nation's first parliament. History It was in 1934 that the idea of a Constituent Assembly for India was put forward by Maina Bendra Nath Roy, a pioneer of the communist movement in India and an advocate of radical democratism. However, it became an official demand of the Indian National Congress in 1935. During World War I the Indians were the King Emperor's loyal subjects and that His Majesty's enemies were their enemies. The Indian contingent provided vital backup to the British expeditionary forces. In World War I, Indian Army during World War I contributed a number of divisions and independent brigades to the European, Mediterranean and the Middle East theatres of war in World War I. One million Indian troops would serve overseas, of whom 62,000 died and another 67,000 were wounded. In total 74,187 Indian soldiers died during the war. On September 3, 1939, Lord Linlithgow, Viceroy of India declared that India was at war with Nazi Germany without consulting the leaders of Indian political parties. The Indian National Congress strongly reacted against this one-sided decision of the Viceroy. The Congress made it clear to the British government that India was always willing to help England to the best of her might and ability provided the latter made a clear declaration to free India after the war. But the British attitude remained evasive. Consequently, all the Congress ministers resigned on October 22, 1939. On October 23, 1939, the Congress condemned the Viceroy a Euro unregistered trademark S attitude and called upon the Congress ministers in the various provinces to resign in protest. From December 7 to December 26, 1939, Sir Stafford Cripps toured India, visiting Karachi, Delhi, Allahabad, Baroda, Hyderabad, Bombay, Wada, and Calcutta. He conducted numerous interviews with British officers and Indian political leaders. Sir Stafford Cripps showed his proposals regarding development of a national constitution assembly and dominion status to Gandhi and Nehru. The Muslim League raised the cry of Islam is in danger, and termed the Indian National Congress as an organization of the Hindus. When the Congress ministries resigned on December 22 the Muslim League celebrated a Euro Liberation Day a Euro unregistered trademark all over the country. On the very same day the League passed a resolution blaming the Congress ministries of violating the religious, social and political rights of the Muslims. This policy of the League provided a surge to the poisonous tree of communalism. The League proposed the two-nation theory and tried its best to assure the Muslim masses and the British rulers that Muslim interests were not common with the Hindus, rather the existence of the minority Muslims was always in danger because of the majority Hindus. British government has fully rejected the proposal of Constitution Assembly as members' representatives should be elected rather than nominated or selected by which possible moment of India's goal of complete self-government. On March 15, 1940 at the meeting of the War Cabinet in England, it was felt that British government was lacking troops and labour in war zones and it became more important to resolve the deadlock which was created in India. On 22 Euro March 24, 1940, Muslim League in a session of its annual conference at Lahore passed the Pakistan resolution calling for the partition of India and development of separate Muslim state. Due of non-availability of troops British government stated downfall at various places. On April 30, 1940, British troops evacuated from Namzos and Nandalsons. On May 3, 1940, British withdrew from central Norway on May 19, 1940. British government ordered to dispatch eight battalions to England for replacements from India. On June 10, 1940, Italy declares war on Britain and France on July 6, 1940, in war cabinet facts of the political situation in India was discussed. As major portion of troop already moved out of India, it was felt that deadlock created may be changed into civil war soon if the issue of dominant status of India is not decided at earliest possible. As it was established the Congress will consider cooperation only if India is forthwith declared to be entirely independent, and free to determine her own destiny. It was also felt that as some members of Congress now rejected Gandhi's doctrine of non-violence inapplicable to external aggression, indicated the possibility of attempts by the Congress to set up defense organizations of its own. 
Subhas Chandra Bose had been a leader of the younger, radical, wing of the Indian National Congress in the late 1920s and 1930s, rising to become Congress president in 1938 and 1939. However, he was ousted from Congress leadership positions in 1939 following differences with Mohandas K. Gandhi and the Congress High Command. British considered Subhas Chandra Bose a dangerous revolutionary and had arrested him on July 2, 1940. He was kept under surveillance at his home in Calcutta but escaped on January 17, 1941 and made his way to Kabul and Moscow. On March 28 he flew to Berlin and created Indian National Army. On July 12, 1940, no final decision was taken but it was agreed that the first step would be for the proposed declaration to be redrafted on the lines proposed, with a view to the Viceroy being consulted as, approved the expansion of the Viceroy's Executive Council and the setting up of a War Advisory Committee on the line sketched. The Secretary of State for India was invited to prepare a revised draft statement on the lines indicated in the discussion and to resubmit it to the War Cabinet authorized the Secretary of State for India to inform the Viceroy of the decisions in, but not to announce them. The Viceroy should be informed that a revised draft statement was being prepared and would be communicated to him, and that he would then be asked whether he favored the issue of the revised draft statement, simultaneously with the announcement of the expansion of his Executive Council and the establishment of a War Advisory Committee. On July 25, 1940, British government felt that developments of the last few months have led to a position that there are not sufficient troops for our requirements in all parts of the world. The period between now and May 1941 may well be critical, and of opinion they would require all the troops which India can provide for service. In special meeting of war cabinet decided that, reaffirmed their decision approving the expansion of the Viceroy's Executive Council, and the setting up of a war advisory committee agreed that an announcement of these two measures should be accompanied by a further declaration. Invited the Prime Minister to draft, for consideration by the War Cabinet, a declaration on the lines indicated by him in discussion, which should involve no departure in principle from the declaration made on May 23. On August 8, 1940, British government responded by Lord Linlithgow in the sort of a proposal which is called August Offer. However, the Congress Working Committee meeting at Warder on August 21, 1940 rejected this offer, and asserted its demand for complete freedom from the imperial power. On 1-2 September 1940, Muslim League also rejected the offer and asserted that it would not be satisfied by anything short of partition of India. On September 12, 1940, Viceroy of India communicate British government about proposals are rejected by both Congress and Muslim League. The All India Congress Committee to call upon people to refuse every kind of participation in the war and in men and money. The suggestion are made to arrest the Indian political leaders on September 27, 1940. Gandhi meet Lord Linlithgow and told that a mass movement may turn violent and he would not like to see the Great Britain embarrassed by such a situation. To oppose this decision by the foreign government, the Congress party decided to launch individual satyagraha. On October 17, 1940, Mahatma Gandhi had chosen Acharya Vinoba Bhav as the first Satyagrahi to start personal Satyagraha and Jawaharlal Nehru as the second. Underlying this decision there was a strategy of preparing their supporters and the party organization for the mass movement which was to follow. By May 15, 1941, 25,000 Satyagrahis had courted arrested and demonstrated the commitment of the people towards the freedom movement nature of the assembly, the constituent assembly, consisting of indirectly elected representatives, was set up for the purpose of drafting a constitution for India. In the event, it remained in being for almost three years, acting as the first parliament of India after independence in 1947. The assembly was not elected on the basis of universal adult franchise. Plus only Muslims and Sikhs were given special representation as minorities. The influential Muslim League initially boycotted the assembly after having failed to prevent its gathering. While a large number of the constituent assembly was drawn from the Congress party in a one-party political ecosphere, it is also important to note that at that point in history, the Congress party included wide diversity within itself, 
from conservative industrialists and radical Marxists, to Hindu revivalists, all of whom drove the process. The assembly met for the first time in New Delhi on December 9, 1946. The last session of the assembly was held on January 24, 1950. Over the course of this period, the assembly held 11 sessions, sitting on a total of 166 days. The hope behind the assembly was expressed by Jawaharlal Nehru, the first task of this assembly is to free India through a new constitution, to feed the starving people, and to cloth the naked masses, and to give every Indian the fullest opportunity to develop himself according to his capacity. Background and Election The Constituent Assembly was set up while India was still under British rule, following negotiations between Indian leaders and members of the 1946 Cabinet mission to India from the United Kingdom. The Provincial Assembly elections had been conducted early in 1946. The Constituent Assembly members were elected to it indirectly by the members of these newly elected Provincial Assemblies and initially included representatives for those provinces which came to form part of Pakistan, some of which are now within Bangladesh. The Constituent Assembly had 299 representatives, including nine women. The Interim Government of India was formed on September 2, 1946 from the newly elected Constituent Assembly. The Congress held a large majority in the Assembly, with 69% of all of the seats while the Muslim League held almost all of the seats reserved in the Assembly for Muslims. There were also some members from smaller parties, such as the Scheduled Caste Federation, the Communist Party of India, and the Unionist Party. In June 1947, the delegations from the provinces of Sindh, East Bengal, Balochistan, West Punjab, and the Northwest Frontier Province withdrew, to form the Constituent Assembly of Pakistan, meeting in Karachi. On August 15, 1947, the Dominion of India and Dominion of Pakistan became independent nations, and the members of the Constituent Assembly who had not withdrawn to Karachi became India's parliament. Only 28 members of the Muslim League finally joined the Indian Assembly. Later, 93 members were nominated from the princely states. The Congress thus secured a majority of 82%. Constitution and Elections, see also, Constitution of India, at 11 a.m. on December 9, 1946, the Assembly began its first session, with 207 members attending. By early 1947, representatives of the Muslim League and princely states joined. The Assembly formally approved the draft Constitution on November 26, 1949. On January 26, 1950, the constitution took effect, a day now commemorated in India as Republic Day. At this point, the Constituent Assembly became a provisional parliament of India, which continued in existence until after the first elections under the new constitution took place in 1952. Organization Dr. Sachkai Dhanandasinha was the first president of the Constituent Assembly when it met on December 9, 1946. Dr. Rajendra Prasad then became the president of the Constituent Assembly, and would later become the first president of India. The vice president of the Constituent Assembly was Professor Harendra Kumar Mukherjee, a former vice chancellor of Calcutta University and a prominent Christian from Bengal, who also served as the chairman of the Constituent Assembly's Minorities Committee. He was appointed governor of West Bengal after India became a republic. Eminent bureaucrat and jurist Sir Benegal Nazing Rao was appointed as the constitutional advisor to the Constituent Assembly. He prepared the original draft of the Constitution and was later appointed a judge in the Permanent Court of International Justice, The Hague. The Assembly's work was organized into five stages, committees were asked to present reports on basic issues. The constitutional advisor, B. N. Rao, prepared an initial draft on the basis of these committees and his own research into the constitutions of other countries. The drafting committee, chaired by Bir Ambedkar, presented a detailed draft constitution that was published for public discussion and comments. The draft constitution was discussed and amendments were proposed and enacted. The constitution was adopted. A committee of experts led by the Congress Party, called the Congress Assembly Party, played a critical role. December 9, 1946 at the first meeting of Constituent Assembly was held in the Constitution Hall, 
now Central Hall of Parliament House. Demanding a separate state, the Muslim League boycotted the meeting. Dr. Sankitan Sinha was elected as temporary president of assembly following the French practice. December 11, 1946 elected Dr. Rajendra Prasad and H. C. Mukherjee as the president and vice president of the assembly respectively. Appointed Sir B. N. Rao as constitutional adviser to the assembly. December 13, 1946 an objective resolution was introduced by Jawaharlal Nehru. Underlying principles of constitution were laid by objective resolution, January 22, 1947, unanimously adopted the objective resolution. May 1949, ratified India's membership of the Commonwealth, July 22, 1947, adopted the flag of India national flag. January 24, 1950, adopted, Yana Ganamana as the national anthem and, Van Matram as the national song. Elected Dr. Rajendra Prasad as the first president of India. The assembly was chaired by Dr. Rajendra Prasad whenever it met as a constituent body and by G. V. Mavlinka when it met as a legislative body. Constituent assembly completed the task of drafting constitution in two years, eleven months and eighteen days. The total expenditure incurred was Rs 6.4 million. Members of the Indian Constituent Assembly, Indian National Congress, Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru, First Prime Minister, Sardar Vallabh Pai Patel, Deputy Prime Minister come Home Minister, Bimre Ramji Ambedkar, Minister for Law, Chairman of Drafting Committee, Maulana Azad, Minister for Education Dr. Rajendra Prasad, Chairman of the Assembly C. Rajagopalachari, Sarat Chandra Bose Governor General, Sri Krishna Sinha, Chief Minister, Bihar, Shyam Nandan Prasad Mishra, Anu Gaur Narayan Sinha, Deputy Chief Minister Cum Finance Minister, Bihar, Rafi Ahmed Kide, Asaf Ali, Sri Sheikh Ghlib Saib, Syama Prasad Mukherjee, President, Hindu Mahasabha, Machuri Satya Narayana, Freedom Fighter, Rajmari Amritka, Minister for Health, Hansa Mehta, President. All India Women's Conference, Professor N. G. Ranga, Deep Narayan Singh P. Subarayan, K. Lashnath Katju, and G. A. Inga, T. T. Krishna Machari, Rameshwar Prasad Sinha, Durga Bay Deshmark, K. M. Munchi, Krishana Balab Sahay, Frank Antony, Anglo Indian Representative, Zava Pali Radhakrishnan Drive John Mathau, Pratap Singh Iron, Parat Ratna Kadambaram Subramaniam, Members of the Indian Constituent Assembly, Madras O. V. Alijason, Mrs. Amaswaminathan, M. Ananth Zanamanga, Mochuri Satya Narayana, Mrs. Dakshayani Velayadan, Mrs. G. Durgabe, Kalabeng Ture, N. Gopalasani Inga, D. Kavinda Das, R. E. V. D. Jerome Tsoza, P. Kakan, T. M. Kalyan Nangounda, K. Kamaraj, V. C. Ksava Rao, T. T. Krishna Machari, Aladi Krishnasami Irl Krishna Swami Bharathi, P. Kuniraman, Mazalakandi Thoamala Rao, V. I. Manasami Pillai, M. A. Muthia Chetia, V. Nadimutha Pillai, S. Nagapa, P. L. Narasimha Raju, B. Patabi Sitramaya, C. P. M. Ulsami Reddy, T. Prakasam, S. H. Prata, Raja Sitakalapati Ramakrishna Ranga Rao of Bobalai, R. K. Shanmukam Chetty, T. A. Ramalingam Chetia, Ramnath Goenka, O. P. Ramasami Redia, N. G. Ranga, Neelam Sanjir Varedi, Shri Sheikh Glib Saib, K. Santhanam, B. Shiva Rao, Kala Subha Rao, Yusrai Navasamalia, P. Subarayan, C. Subramaniam, V. Subramaniam, M. C. Virabahu Pillai, P. M. V. Lanudapani, A. K. Menon, T. J. M. Wilson, Muhammad Ismail Saib, K. T. M. Ahmed Ibrahim, Makhbub Ali Beg Sahib Baja, B. Pokha Sahib Baja, Bombay Balkhandra Mayashwar Gupt, Hansa Mehta, Hari Vinayak Pateskar, B. Rambedkar, Joseph Alban Soza, Kanailil Nanabhai Desai, Kesha Thau Maratire Jedhe, Kandabhai Kazanji Desai, Balganga Torkare, M. Amasani, K. M. Munchi, Naraha Vishnu Gajal, S. Nigel Ingapa, S. K. Patil, Ramkhandra Mourno Hor Nalavad, Aradai Wakar, Shankaradeo, G. V. Mavalanka, Bilal Pai Patel, Abdul Kadar Muhammad Sheikh, A. A. Khan, West Bengal Mono Mohan Das, Arun Chandra. Goa, 
Lakshmi Kantamitra, Melia Lothapopatai, Satis Chandra Samanta, Suresh Chandra Majumda, Upendranath Barman, Prabhudayal Haimatsinka, Basanta Kumar Das, Mrs. Renuka Ray, H. C. Mukherjee, Surendra Mohan Goes, Syama Prasat Mukherjee, Ari Bajagurung, Ari Platel, K. C. Neerji, Ragibazan, Somnith Lahiri, Jazimuddin Ahmad, Nazaruddin Ahmad, Abdul Hamid, Abdul Halim Asnavi, United Provinces Ajit Prasat Jain, Algaru Shastri, Balkrishna Sharma, Banti Dal Misra, Bagwandin, Damoda Sarupseth, Dayal Das Pigat, Daram Prakash, A. Daram Das, R. V. Tukar, Firas Gandhi, Gopal Narain, Krishna Chandra Sharma, Govind Balat Pant, Govind Manobir, Ha Govind Pant, Haraya Neth, Shastri, Rida Neth Kunzru, Chorspat Roy Kapo, Jagannath Bakash Singh, Jawaharlal Nehru, Jijendra Singh, Jugal Kishore, Jwala Prasad Srivastava, B.V. Keskar, Mrs. Kamala Chaudhary, Kamalapati Taiwari, J.B. Kapalani, Mahavat Yaji, Kirsh Lal, Masoya Din, Mohan Lal Saxena, Padampat Singh Anya, Ful Singh, Paroji Lal, Mrs. Purnima Banerjee, Prashottam Das Tundan, Hiravalabhatrapathy, Ramchandra Gupta, Shibanal Saxena, Satish Chandra, John Michtal, Mrs. Suchita Kpalani, Sunder Law, Van Kates Narayan Tivari, Mohanlal Gautam, Vishvam Dayal Trapathy, Vishnu Sharon Dublish, Begum Aziz Razal, Hyder Hussain, Hazrat Muani, Abel Kalamazad, Muhammad Ismail Khan, Rafi Ahmad Kide, Mode. Hifza Raman, Zh Lari, East Punjab Bakshai Tech Chand, J. Ramdas Dalatram, Thakur Das Pagava, Bikramal Sundi, Yashwatri, Ranbir Singh, Lala Achant Ram, Nan Lal, Sada Baldav Singh, Jani Gamak Singh Musafir, Sada Hukam Singh, Sada Bopanda Singh Man, Sada Ratan Singh Loga Chaudhry Siraj Mal, Bihora Mio Kumarosh, Anu Graw Narayan Sinha, Banazi Prasad Janjanwala, Bhagwat Prasad, Boniface Lakra, Brajeshwar Prasad, Chandakar Ram, K. T. Shah, Devendra Neth Samanta, Dip Narain Sinha, Gupta Nath Singh, Jadubin Sahay, Jagat Narain Lal, Jagjeevan Ram, Jayapal Singh, Kameshwar Singh of Darbanga, Kamalishwari Prasad Yadav, Muresh Prasad Sinha, Krishna Balab Sahay, Raghunandan Prasad, Rajendra Prasad, Rameshwar Prasad Sinha, Ram Narayan Singh, Sach Kaidananda Sinha, Sarangdor Sinha, Satyanarayan Sinha, Binodhanam Jar, P. K. Sen, Sri Krishna Sinha, Sri Narayan Mahtha, Siamanandan Sahaya, Hussein Imam, Syedj for Imam, Latta for Raman, Muhammad Aya, Tadamal Hussain, Chudri Abid Hussain, P. T. Hargavind Mishra, Central Provinces and Bera Ragu Vira, Rajamari Amritka, B. A. Mandoy, Brilal Nandal Bayani, Thakur Chidalal, Seth Govindas, Hari Singh Gur, Hari Vishnu Kamath, Hemkhandra Jaga Baji Kandka, Ganshyam Singh Gupta, Lakshman Shruan Bhatka, Panjabre Shamre Deshmark, Ravi Shankar Shikla, RKSIDHVA, Shankar Trimbak Tamadhikari, Frank Antony, Kazi Syed Karamuddin, Ganpatrao Dani, Assam Nibaran Chandra Laskar, Taranid Horbasu Matari, Gupinath Bardolai, JJM Nichols Roy, Kulator Shalaya, Roni Kuma Shotari, Muhammad Sorjala, Abdul Roof, Orissa Bisnith Das, Krishna Chandra Gajapati Narayana Dev, Harakrishna Mayatub, Laxman Arayan Zahu Lokanath Mishra, Nankishore Das, Rajrishna Bose, Santanu Kuma Das, Yadhas Hir Mishra, Delhi. Despandu Gupta, Ajme Amawarami Kut by Hari Lal Pagava, Kog CM Poonacha, Misal KC Reddy, T Siddhalin Aya, Acha Guruv Reddy, S V Krishnamurthy Rao, K Hanuman Thaiya, H Said Devi Arappa, T Chania, Jammu and Kashmir Sheikh Muhammad Abdullah, Motaram Begra, Msamomed Aftsal Beg, Maulana Muhammad Said Masudi, Travankal Cochin Patam Athanu Pillai, R Sankar, P T Kako, Panampili Govinda Menon, Annie Mascarene, P S Nataraja Pillai, K A Muhammad, 
Madhul Parat Vinayak Sitram Zawait, Biraj Narain, Gopi Krishna Vijayavagaya, Ram Sahai, Kusum Kant Jain, Radhavalap Vijayavagaya, Sitram S. Chadu, Saurashtra Balantri Gopalji Mata, Jaisakla Hathi, Amrit Ilvithaldas Thakka, Kiman Lukakup Haishar, Samaldas Lakshmdas. Gandhi, Rajasthan Vt Krishna Machari, Hiralil Shastri, Sada Singh Jai of Khitri, Jorswant Singhji, Raj Baja, Manikya Lal Varma, Gokul Lal Asafa, Ramp Khandra Upadhyaya, Balant Sinamata, Dalil Singh, Jainarain Vyas, Patiala and East Punjab States Union Ranjit Singh, Sashe Singh, Bhagwant Roy, Bombay States Vinakrat Balshan Kavadia, B. N. Munavali, Gokul Bhai Dalatram Bhat, Shivraj Narayan Mehta, Gopaldas A. Desai, Paranal Thakurlal Munchi, B. H. Kardka, Ratnapa Baramapa Kumbhor, Orissa States Lal Mohan Pati, N. Madeva Rao, Raj Kunwar, Sarinath Das, Yadhisthya Mishra, Central Provinces States R. L. Malavia, Kishoram and Trapathi, Ramprasat Potai, United Provinces States B. H. Zaidi, Krishna Singh, Madras States V. Ramana, Ramakrishna Ranga Rao, Vindal Pradesh Avdesh Pratap Singh, Shambhu Neth Shikla, Ram Sahai Taiwari, Mani Lalji Dwai Dedi, Kuch Bihul Himat Singh K. Mayashwari, Tripura and Manipagurja Shankagoa, Bhopal Lal Singh, Kuch Bhawani Ajahn Kimji, Himakal Pradesh Yashwant Singh Palma, Sessions, The Constituent Assembly of India met for 12 sessions on the following dates. Debates Constituent Assembly debates were the discussions, arguments etc. that took place in order to write the Constitution of India. These discussions happened between the elected members of the Assembly who later served as the nation's first parliament. It is said that only 28% people of the total population were eligible to vote at that time, so only this percentage of people participated in the elections for the Assembly. The English translation of the debates is available for viewing here. See also, History of Independent India, Constitution of India, Central Legislative Assembly, Indian Independence Movement, Constituent Assembly, Indian National Army, Subhas Chandra Bose, Sources. External links, Constituent Assembly Debates, Some Facts of the Constituent Assembly, List of Members of the Constituent Assembly Parliament of India, Further Reading. Austin, Granville. The Indian Constitution, Cornerstone of a Nation. New Delhi, OUP India, 1999. ISBN 0-19-564959-1, by Panchandra, Mridula Mukherjee, and Aditya Mukherjee. India Since Independence, Revised Edition. New Delhi, Penguin Books India, 2008.